with that out of the way, uh, evening everyone, my name is Hamish Taylor, I'm the Greens candidate for the District of Mordialloc. Uh, before we begin, I'd first like to acknowledge that this forum is being held on the traditional lands of the Boonarum people of the Kulin Nation who have lived in this place for thousands of years, and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders of that people, past, present and emerging. I'd also like to thank Greg Day and everyone down at the MTF for putting this fantastic series of events together. I think they're a brilliant idea. Melbourne is the fastest growing city in Australia and it is critical that we are planning now for world-class transport services. For years we were ranked as the world's most livable city, but this year, only a few days ago, we were pipped at the post by Vienna. Public transport that meets everyone's needs is critical to that overall livability that we've cherished. Neglect that we have from one state government to the next impacts our city as a whole and our state as a whole. Victoria had significantly more rail in the 1930s, the height of our Great Depression, than we do today, with a metropolitan population of just over a million people at the time. We had one of the best integrated public transport systems in the world, and it was publicly owned and operated. Embarrassingly, the governments of a century ago were better at meeting the needs of a comprehensive rail network than Victorian governments of the recent decades. Now Melbourne's population is set to surpass 5 million. We have less than half the length of rail servicing our state, and our once most livable city is being left in the dust of state transport agendas that prioritise road above all else. I'm proud to be standing with a party with an established history of recognising the importance of public transport integrated, reliable and accessible in making a city run smoothly for our residents and our visitors alike. Our policies acknowledge that public transport is better for the planet and better for every person in our community. If you don't drive because you're young, old, you struggle with a disability or a mobility problem, can't afford to run a car, or any other reason, new road projects will not suit your needs. If you do drive, comprehensive transport options mean fewer cars on the road and better overall community safety. Any transport planner will tell you that today's major pro road projects will be tomorrow's traffic jams. If you need to drive for work, you will support good functional public transport to minimise our road congestion. Level crossing removals, I will admit, are an excellent example of a public transport investment that also serves the best interests of road users, and I fully support them. I want to believe that all of this investment in rail infrastructure along the Frankston line, just nearly in time for a, Frank a state election, is simply good decision making. But the newly rendered Frankston line appears to be a roller coaster. It's elevated in some sections, lowered in others, with very little consideration for the environmental impact or the best interests of efficiency in engineering. I question the inconsistency of choosing to cut and cut the cover at Edith Vale, where it is very likely to have impacts both predicted and unforeseen on our nearby internationally recognised wetlands just over one kilometre away. The community environment and the longevity of the infrastructure would be better served by a well-planned rail replacement project that is consistent along the line, be that raised or lowered. Transport in this area in particular are a stark demonstration of how infrastructure decision making shapes our environment in a number of different ways. Our heavily encroached rem remnant wetland near the Bale is actually the only urban Ramsar site in Victoria, and that's an internationally accredited wetland. It is a jewel in the crown for our Mordialic area. Yet the state government plans to sink a train line between the wetland and the bay on one side and stick a freeway on the other. In planning this freeway, the government is advertising at a cost of $44 million per kilometre, its own failure to keep pace with the public transport needs of our electorate. That is a lot of money to move the occasional traffic jam at nine kilometres north. That's a traffic jam created at the expense of some of our world's most endangered birds that rely on our wetlands and parks. It's a traffic jam created through acid sulphate soils in breach of the government's own coastal acid management guidelines, resulting in sulfuric acid runoff. It's a traffic jam carved out of green space, much valued by local residents, for their kids to grow up in just as I did. And all for what Vic Rhodes describes as a travel time saving of up to 10 minutes. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but we can't estimate or investigate those savings or the overall value of the freeway because the government still will not release the business plan or modelling. Perhaps they know in a lead up to an election that making that plan public will do them no favours. Again, we urge State Labor to make public these business plans for a proposal which would chew up nearly half a billion dollars of taxpayer money and bury our cherished public land under bitumen. 
Until such time, the Mordialic Freeway proposal should be filed along with public transport privatisation and road privatisation under the folder of bad ideas, and that funding needs to be shifted to interconnected public transport options connecting the southeast. Why can't we have the world-class transport network we once did? Why aren't we investigating options to make sure that they are fully accessible for people of all ages and mobilities? Why don't state governments prioritise public transport that meets the needs of all people instead of the needs of the select few? What we seriously need is multimodal infrastructure in places that currently have none or not nearly enough. The UN Urban Environment Program recommends at least 20% of states' transport budget for walking and cycling. In Victoria, that number is less than 1%. We must do better and work with local councils to provide safer paths for cyclists, people using mobility aids and pedestrians. Bike paths that are safe and separated from traffic, connecting schools, the rail network and homes are cheap compared to other transport options, far cheaper. They are accessible and they immensely relieve the pressure on school run traffic. We must invest in higher capacity trains and improve the signalling on our rail network to reduce overcrowding. We have to seriously consider light rail options to connect the Frankston and Cranbourne lines. The first complaint I hear from people is an absolute PT dead zone between the two, two train lines. Until then, accessible bus stops servicing low floor buses along to frequent and direct routes connecting train lines with schools, services and businesses will provide a missing link for that dead zone. Along the coastal fringe, we're luckily, in, we're luckily served by rail. But how many people living a few kilometres inland wouldn't have been able to make it tonight due to a lack of PT? I know I certainly wouldn't have been able to. We will never know nor have the benefit of their experience at this forum tonight. It's an appalling shame because comprehensive community consultation and engagement is invaluable to our processes and their experience would have been of immense value to our discussion. For those of you who are here tonight, I'm keen to hear what matters to you and take on board your ideas. We have a strong history of transport innovation because we listen to global and local experts to find what works internationally and domestically, and because we listen to you who have the most to gain and the most to lose from transport planning decisions. Public transport that works for all is possible, it's practical, and it's no less than what our Mordialic community and our once most livable city deserve. Thank you.